Welcome back to the Youth News Official, where it's for the youth, by the youth, and about the youth. I'm Rish. And I'm Caleb. And I'm Daniel. And today, we'll be getting insights into the different stages of photography. So, without further ado, let's dive into the world of photography. Hello, hello, my name is Ayn Shafika Batirosti. So, I'm a lecturer at ICT. So, I'm UITM graduate. I'm majoring in fine art photography. My experience is including freelancing for 10 years. I'm a lecturer now and still doing a freelance in visual field, not just in photography, but also in video, in graphic design. Hi, my name is Amanda. I'm 23 years old. I currently live in Kuala Lumpur and I'm a full-time photographer and I own a broadcasting and media production um, studio. I took diploma in mass communications in ICT College. Hi, my name is Gongzi or I also known as James. I am 20 this year. I am studying in IACT, majoring in broadcasting film. As for me, title qualification is very important to prove like your discipline and your multiple skills to achieve. And the experience is for the validation, you know, of the things that you learn in your uh, school and it's written in the paper to pursue towards a professional field. I see so many people out there who want a degree, who are pursuing a degree, but they forget that their skills in what they want to do, whether it's photography, filmmaking, that also is important. And also having the soft skills, um, your attitude matters as well. Actually, both are actually quite important, especially when you are on this field, because in these days, people just especially in the photography world, people just look at your work and that's where you, that's where people see whether do, do they like your work, is your work suitable for them and then they, they will hire you based on that. But for qualifications, you actually learn the theory behind it. So you, you learn what, uh, how is, uh, does the lighting work, how exposure work. So it's not just the aesthetic and visual, it's not just the aesthetic, you know, like you put a style in your photo, but it's also uh, the meaning behind that, you know, like why you want to produce this and why you want to shoot this and produce that to, to make your audience to understand. It's part of visual communication too. Like maybe to learn the basics, if you really put your mind to it, to learn about how to take a picture or how to set your camera, maybe that's easy, but like, to build yourself, to build your portfolio, to put your name out there, your work out there, it's actually not easy. It's also building your eye for the photos that you want and your creativity. It's not just it's not just the gear, it's you as well. So with a self-photography photographer, maybe they say they would think like, oh you haven't been to a photo uh been to a uh film school or photography school. You did not have a qualification or something like that. And that's when they will think that you are not good enough. But to be honest, majority of photographers out there who are like Sifu levels are actually self-taught. After around three to four years being in the visual industry, I realized that I love to share my knowledge to friends and people. It's not just in photography knowledge. Yeah. I love to share what I know, you know, like including general skills. I love to play music, you know, like I even be like a facilitator for NGO actually previously teaching music. So it's actually kind of fun to share my knowledge, what I know. I really have like that vision to, to share what my thoughts and my knowledge to the person who doesn't know anything. And that is where I decided to go into educational field. Finally, I got the opportunity to become a photography lecturer at 2016. It was fun with all the hands-on learning because um, even myself, I love uh, to read books, I love to, to study, but I also love to do a hands-on project, which is I'm in balance. I'm not just going to stick like 100% with the books. Theoretical, I also love to practice and try to find like relevance in what am I doing uh, with what I learned. So um, that is what fun being a photography lecturer, you know, like going to places, sharing techniques and etc. 
what makes me love to share my knowledge and to to get more understanding you know like by sharing to people we actually gaining something yeah we learn each other uh at only 19 i realized that photography was what i wanted to do it was a feeling of like addiction like i was shooting every weekend and this is a good addiction it's not a bad <laughs> addiction um i was shooting almost every weekend i was dragging my friends with me every weekend i didn't realize how much i was going out just to shoot and and when i didn't shoot maybe because of finals or just physically tired i felt this withdrawal feeling and i think when i had that feeling i kind of knew that this is something i really wanted to look into this is really what i wanted to pursue I started volunteering in church as a volunteer photographer and with encouragement from other people or friends after doing like this kind of event photography work and of course other people might see your photos from outside as well and they say wow your photos are nice and that's where like people just push and say can you come and help me take uh an event photography or can you come and take my birthday uh my friend's birthday or something like that and of course they will pay you and that's where the first step and the push started and as for now my obstacle is just to only getting updated by the trend because it's moving so fast You know like visual communication is one of the biggest tool for communication nowadays so this is part of my obstacle but I'm still updating and I am grateful that I'm teaching at ICT because I get to know uh, my students I get to know the trend by um, their submission and by their style you know like every semester I think in the beginning it was quite hard when I would get criticism or I would get comments I really took it to heart I really took it very personally and I think that really affected my confidence and affected my mental health the most. I would say being a female photographer going into a very male do- dominated industry was quite hard for me. Um but I hope after 4 years of working so hard to get to where I am that I built my own name, I built my I would I would say like something like legacy or built um build something to prove that I'm actually worth being here. I used to be a very shy person. I don't connect with people a lot, you know. So, that's one of the obstacles for me to have that first step to actually meet new people. It's going to be my uh series of photography, uh, serendipity, the one that I took uh and exhibit for three times and the artwork title is Aku and Kamu. Okay? So the one that I ex- uh, exhibit at the first time is at uh Homes Art Gallery, it's at Ampang, and after that it's Gallery Tun Zahira, your ITM, and after that it's been exhibited at Art Market Malaysia. Um, it was the lockdown before Chinese New Year when I decided to enter an exhibition. It was a photo of my grandparents that I shot in my house. Um, it was it was a photo series to showcase basically their love story since they were teenagers because my grandparents got married when they were. My grandma my grandma was 19 and my grandfather was 17. So they got married at a very young age. And they've been through so much together and also individually um both in their marriage and both in their you know their health and and things like that. The exhibition name is called Strength. I view them as my strength. One of the picture will be an uncle who is so engaging where he will show a thumbs up every single time I take a photo and other people who want to take his photo right to show a thumbs up and that sadness of 
appreciate this and the smile of people's face really sparks people's day. It's really important for you guys to know what's the meaning behind the photo but with every little details such as why there's a guitar at my back, why there's like color on my shirt, it all must be relevant. You could see and understand what is the situation, what is the story behind that one photo itself. If this is really what you decide to do, if this is your burning passion that you really want to pursue, go for it. Just, just really go for it. And there will definitely be times where you will hit rock bottom questioning yourself if this is really what you want to do. But if you find yourself still <clears throat> loving this choice, loving what you're doing, then you kind of know that that is actually really, really what you want to do for the rest of your life. Your skills can be really bad right now, but with a humble heart and you stay grounded, people will notice you and people will want to work with you and people will connect with you and that's where it will bring you far and it will lead you to places where you never think of. Thank you for watching our video. Be sure to like and subscribe to our channel for more youth-based content and comment down below what you think of today's video. Check out our other social platforms in the description below. We will see you guys next time.